Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our 2D Hack and Slash uh, series. Uh, this is a pay what you want course. Uh, in this, I think we're on part 25 now. And in this video, we're going to be doing the crow enemy. Uh, so we'll be adding one more enemy into our game. Now the crow enemy has two main states. It has a chase state, and then it kind of has uh, a, a death state. But we probably won't be getting into the death state quite yet, because uh, we'll be probably doing that in another video. We'll be doing death states for all the enemies. So let's get into our chase state and uh, other stuff for our crow first. So let's create a new object. And we're just going to call this O underscore crow. And we're going to give it a create event. And let's assign a sprite to it. Uh, so let's select sprite. If we come into, oh, it looks like we need to import these sprites for the crow. Yeah, we do. OK, so let me bring up my files here. And find where I have the resources. I'm trying to remember where I put them. <laughs> okay, here and here and oh my goodness, hopefully I didn't delete them. That would be sad. I'd have to do this the hard way. Um, not too hard way, but yeah, I don't see them here. I may have I may have deleted them by mistake. That's okay, cause I know how to get them back. Uh, I have my. You guys should still have them. Um, save this to downloads. Save, and then we'll save this as well. Edit, save. To downloads. There we go. So I just, I just got them both back. So we're gonna um, open up my files again. Go to downloads, and then I'm just gonna drag and drop the these two images into sprites. Oops. Let's make sure we get this one correctly. There we go. Sprites. Here we go. Let's create a new group. Oops. Not sprite. Let's delete that. Delete. Let's create a new group. Uh, so we'll do add group. We'll call it crow. And then we can drag these into here. And we'll rename this one. It just says crow. And our feather will center it, middle center. And our crow, we will also center it, I think. Let me check and see where I put the, whoops, hopefully that wasn't too loud. Let me check and see where I put the, looks like I put the origin about the center. So middle center, there we go. Okay, we got our crow sprite now and our feather sprite. Let's close those. We'll come back into our crow object, assign the sprite of the crow. Here we go. And right here, we're going to uh, we're going to create um, just like we did in our enemy night. We're going to set up a state system, and we'll just use a switch statement like this. So we'll we'll create a state variable here. We'll say state is equal to chase. And we'll have a similar state to the night, and then we're going to say HP equals one crows. They only take one hit. Um, where do we have our HP in our knight? Oh, I think it's inherited from the life form. Yeah, the knight's HP is inherited from the life form. So we'll want to make sure that our crow also inherits from life form. So come into our crow, and we'll do event, or let's see, parent life form 
There we go. And then we want to call event inherited right here, like that. So we inherit the create event. And we'll set HP equal to one and max HP equal to one as well. And I'm pretty sure that life form has max underscore HP. Yep. And we can just set it equal to HP actually. Okay. Once we've done that, we'll need to set an image speed for how fast the image animates. I'm not actually sure what this number should be. Um, I'm going to guess 0 0.2, but I don't actually know. We'll see. Um, then we're going to set, I think for this one, we can just use the built-in h speed variables. So we'll say h speed equals choose. Um, actually, we'll do... We'll do I random range uh, one and two. So a range between one and two. Now let's just do random range. I want to have it be a, a little bit more random. I random range gives you an integer, which means um, you can only have whole numbers, but I want to have in between numbers. So then we're going to say if instance exists o underscore skeleton so we want to make sure the player exists if the player does exist we want to set our h speed to make sure that that we're always going towards the skeleton so we'll say h speed equals uh, sign o underscore skeleton dot x minus x so how does that work? Uh, so there's some fancy math here, uh, but basically if we open up paint.net real quick, I can show you. So let's say our position is right here and let's say the skeleton's position is right here, okay? Um, let's say their X position is 10 and our X position is four, okay? Uh, we want to make sure, so this is, let's see, this is the skeleton, right? Jar skeleton. This is our crow. Oh man, look at that artwork. You guys, I'm sure you guys are impressed. <laughs> um, so, so uh, we want the crow to face this direction, right? Um, and this direction being negative one. This is negative one. Facing this direction would be positive one. Um, uh, or not necessarily negative one or positive one. It would be, we would multiply our H speed by negative one or positive one in order to make sure that our H speed was headed in the right direction. Cause it, we want a negative H speed if we're going this way, positive H speed if we're going this way. And we can multiply it by negative or positive one in order to get a negative H speed or a positive H speed. So what we would do then is we would take our crow's X position, which is 10, and we would subtract four no, 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 we would take, we would take the player's X position, right? Which is four. And then we'd subtract 10. And what does this give us? This gives us negative six, which is a negative number. But then we would do the sign of this number, which converts any negative number into negative one and any positive number into positive one. Now let's say these roles were reversed. Let's say that the crow was actually over here and the skeleton was over here, it would still work because we would do, the crow would need to face this direction, which would be positive one. Uh, but we would have the crow, we'd have the skeleton's position of 10 minus the crow's position of four would give us six, which is positive, And then our, our sine value would return positive one. So we can use this math to get either a negative one or a positive one. And so that's what we're doing. We're getting, we're getting either a negative one or a positive one, and then we're going to multiply our H speed. So not equals, but multiplied. So H speed times equals either positive one or negative one. Once we've done that, we can actually set our image X scale. Image X scale. Now this, we need, um, we need to get 
either a one or a negative one, we don't want to have, we don't, basically we don't want to have the full value again because then our crow would be all stretched out weird, right? Uh, so we're here, we're going to say sine of h speed like that, okay? And we can set our damage. We'll set it equal to five. And um, we'll set an attacked variable in here and we'll set this equal to false. And we need to set our experience too. And I think I'd set this equal to two for now. Okay, I think we have all the variables we need. Um, knockback doesn't matter on the crow because the crow just disappears into a poof of feathers. So we've got all of the stuff we need from our from our create event. Now what we're going to need is to set up our chase state. And this is a pretty simple state. Um, So let's come into our, let's add an event. We'll add a step event. Then we'll do our switch statement again. So we'll say switch state case chase break. Okay. So now we're going to deal damage to the skeleton. And we're not going to do this using our fancy uh, creating hitbox stuff um, because we don't need to for this, for this crow. We're just going to detect an overlap, deal damage, and set attacked equal to false. So we'll say if place meeting x, y, o underscore skeleton. Let's get a little more room here because this if statement's going to go a little farther. And not and attacked equals false. So we haven't attacked yet. Then we'll say uh, create hitbox. I guess we will, will create a hitbox. Might as well. Um, X, Y, creator will be self, sprite index will be, or the sprite will be sprite index. Uh, the knockback will be knockback. So we do actually need knockback. The lifespan will be one. The damage will be damage. And the X scale will be image x scale. And then we'll just set attack equal to true. Like this. And then inside of this state we'll say if attacked equals true. And make sure we use the double equals here. The comparison operator, not the assignment operator. If attacked equals true, then V speed equals negative one. Basically, once we've hit the skeleton, we want the crow to kind of fly up off the top of the screen. And then we're going to make sure that we destroy this crow if it goes outside the room. So add an event, other, uh, let's see. Where are you? Outside room, instance, destroy. And let's see, how is our skeleton adding score? It's when it runs out of health, right? Let's check our life form. I don't actually know. It must be in the, it must be in the hitbox object. Yep, yep, it is. We're doing it in there. Okay, so that's good. Come back to our crow, 
and this should be fine. That should work fine. So we really don't need our our state system yet, but uh, we will. So let's actually put a crow in the room now. Let's come into here, and we'll come to our instances layer. I'll drop a crow right here. Hmm. I want it to be like a little lower than that. So let's change our grid to 32 or 16. Okay. There we go. Let's try this. I'll put a couple of them in the room, actually. Maybe one over here, too. Let's see how this works. If we get an error message or not. Okay, they're definitely crow. Oh yeah, we forgot to create our crow knockback. So crow knockback. We'll set it equal to, I'm just going to use the knockback value in here, which was eight, I guess. That seems kind of high. What's our knight's knockback? In the attack. Uh, four. I feel like the crow would have less knockback. Let's set the crows to four as well, just to see. And then obviously we need a much faster, we need faster speeds. Let's do two to three. And let's do point five for the image speed. Because it was kind of really, really slow. There we go. We get hit. It flies off the screen if we get hit. Perfect. However, we can still get hit while we're rolling. So let's let's do some checks for that. Um, let's get access to our... If not instance exists, object skeleton. Let's place this in our crow as well. In the step event. Here we go, let's put it right up here at the top so we know that the skeleton exists. Then once we've done that, uh, once we know for sure that the skeleton actually exists, we can also check the skeleton state. So we'll say and oh, skeleton dot state does not equal and there we go, does not equal roll. Um, did I use uppercase for it? Let's see. Nope, I didn't. Okay, so that way we can't get hit by the crows when we're in the roll state. Roll past this guy. Hit him a few times. Roll past this crow. <laughs> we had the guy hit the crows. Perfect. Although the crows don't be don't appear to be creating the experience when they die. So let's fix that real quick. Where am I actually creating the experience? Oh, I did it in here. Okay, so we have to copy. We're gonna end up creating, well, let's copy this. We're, but we're gonna end up creating a, a parent object for our enemies um, here soon as well. So I copied the end step from the knight object. I'm gonna come into the crow and I'm going to right click and do override event and then paste it in here so that the crow then correctly creates the experience as well. So probably uh, I'm not 100% sure how the videos are going to go, but my guess is, um, there we go. Let's see if we can catch up to this one, get our experience from it. My guess is that we'll be doing in the next lesson, I'll be doing an enemy spawner. And in the lesson after that, I'll be doing the enemy parent. And so we'll kind of clean up our enemy code just a bit. And then after that, we'll be doing the enemy death state so that we've got, uh, we've got a nice death. They don't just disappear. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.